Hi there, everyone. Prerak Juthani, third year internal medicine resident and interested in hospitalist medicine. One thing I wanted to make a video on today is the anatomy of a history and physical. As you may know, the history and physical is one of the most important documents that we all know and love, uh, but it also is something that we don't get taught a lot about. What exactly goes into it? How do you write a good one? How do you focus on the things that matter? And so today, my goal is to actually walk through the entire aspect of a history and physical. I'll walk through all the nuances. Um, I'll tell you every single portion of a history and physical. And then most importantly, by the end of this video, I want everyone to feel comfortable with parts of the history and physical, know what questions to ask patients who ultimately um, are coming in for a chief complaint, and you're going to relay that complaint in your history and physical. The reason why this is important, as I said, is one, when you write a history and physical, you're not just telling me your thoughts, you're also telling others what you think is going on. If someone's coming in with shortness of breath, your history and physical and the way you present the patient has a big influence in the way I perceive the patient. So if you're telling me they're coming in with shortness of breath and they have a pretty extensive cardiac history and they are coming in with crushing substernal chest pain, and that their troponin was elevated, you're, you're painting out a much more likely picture of ACS as opposed to a pulmonary embolus. That's not to say that the second thing couldn't happen, but the way you communicate all of these things in your history and physical has a pretty profound impact in the way others perceive them. Um, so I think that's important. And above all else, this is the way we communicate in healthcare. In healthcare, uh, we speak in a lot of big words, we speak in a lot of lingo, but at the end of the day, we do need to document things because let's say 30 years down the road, we need to see what what happened this time around, we actually have these records and we can see, oh, this is why they thought it was this and not a pulmonary embolus, right? So that's kind of the goal for today's video. The general overview of an H&P, in case uh, we want to just go to the bare bones, I'm going to go over every single one of these pieces and show you exactly what they mean. An H&P will usually start with a one-liner. The one-liner is basically a one-line summary of what's going on with the patient and why they're presenting. Then you have the history of present illness. What that means is how and why did the patient present? What happened three weeks ago? Were they okay and then they suddenly got worse? Three weeks ago, were they already not feeling great and this is a mild decline just over time and that's ultimately why they presented? What led them to the hospital? Then we're gonna talk about the ED course. What happened in the emergency department? What did they do when they came in and why did they get admitted? Then we'll talk about the important aspects of the past medical history, past surgical history. We'll go into the social history, which is very important, the family history as well. And lastly, uh, the physical, uh, well, right before we talk about the biggest thing, we're going to go into the physical exam, which I think is such a beautiful part of medicine and important to document, followed by the assessment and plan. So for each of these, I'm going to show you exactly how we do them. Let's start with the one-liner. So here is an example one-liner. An 89-year-old prior software engineer with a past medical history of diabetes with an A1C of 10, COPD, 50-pack year smoking history, CKD with a baseline creatinine of 1.8, uh, is presenting with shortness of breath that's concerning for a COPD exacerbation versus a heart failure exacerbation versus a pulmonary embolus. Right away, in one sentence, you have taught me a bit about the past medical history. You've taught me a bit about the uh, uh, past social history, right? You told me they're a software engineer. You told me important aspects of their past medical history that's important for me to know. And you already told me what you think is going on. Is this a heart failure exacerbation? Is this COPD? Or is this a PE, pulmonary embolus? This is the important part of a one-liner. A one-liner is kind of like the TLDR of the H&P. What exactly is going on? If I don't have time to read all of this, what is the biggest thing I should know? It's that. The part that I like about this is I always try to include relevant facets of the past medical history and, and distinctly just tell the reader what I think is going on. It's like, hey, I think this is a COPD exacerbation. Put your money on it because at the end of the day, if someone is very briefly looking at your note, they kind of want to know what you were thinking. And even if they may not agree with it, at least you've substantiated it with what you think is going on. So as I said, these are the big parts of the one-liner. Now let's talk about the next thing, which is the history of present illness. The next part in an H&P is how did the patient get to where they are? No one wants to end up in the emergency department at a 10 p.m. on a Saturday, and yet tons of people do. And each of them has their unique story of why they end up there. So learn about it because it's the least we can do. And trust me, it's one of the best things that a doctor can do or anyone who's seeing the patient. Learn the story. What happened 
10 weeks ago, five weeks ago, three weeks ago? What happened this morning? And why did you come in now? Why did you come in at 10 p.m. on Saturday? And why not three weeks ago? And they will give you really good answers. And those answers will provide you with an insight into what exactly was going on. Sometimes it can be tough to get this information. So here's a schema. It's called the old cart schema. Talk about the onset. What caused your pain? When did it start? Talk about the location. Where is your pain? Talk about the duration. How long has this been going on? Talk about the aggravating and relieving factors. What makes your pain better? What makes it worse? Then talk about the severity. On a scale of 1 to 10, how bad is your pain? And as you're doing all of this, T- try to tap in on try try to tap in on things. So if they say their chest pains in the middle of their chest, say like, when did that start? How bad is it? And ultimately, what makes it better? If they then describe some knee pain, try to do the same thing. By getting all of this information, you'll be able to kind of piece everything together. You'll you'll realize that the beauty of the history is that sometimes it almost makes sense. It's like, oh, okay, so you have a history of heart failure. You had your meds three weeks ago. You ran out of them five days ago, and today you're more short of breath because you and you haven't been taking your meds at all. And they'll say yes. Well, it's like okay. Well, that makes sense. Maybe you've just been um, maybe the volume's been building up because you haven't been able to take your meds. So that's the beauty of the HPI, and this is the way I'm kind of alluding to making sure you get the important parts of it down. Then you have the ED course. When someone comes into a hospital, they often need to go to the ED, and then from the ED, they get admitted. In the ED, they do several things. They often measure the patient's vitals, so always document the vitals in the ED. They will often get labs in the ED, document what labs they got. They will often get imaging in the ED. They may get a CT of the abdomen and pelvis, CT chest, chest x-ray, whatever they get, I would document it. And oftentimes, they do interventions in the ED. They give fluids, they give antibiotics, sometimes they give breathing treatments. Document all of those because that data is now going to be ripe for the using when you tell me what you think is going on. So if someone comes in and their labs show that they have a remarkably high troponin, well, now you're worried about ACS. If someone comes in and they have an insanely low potassium, well, now you're worried about hypokalemia. How did they treat that hypokalemia? Did they give them IV potassium, right? These are all things that's important to know. And if you don't go into the ED course, we won't know that. So in documenting the ED course of vitals, imaging, labs, and interventions, That's the best way to approach it. Now, go into the past medical history and the past surgical history. It's not as important, but just a 30-foot overview. Hey, what big medical conditions do you have that we should be aware of? What are the past surgeries you've had? Have you had a surgery in the last few weeks? Because believe it or not, they had a surgery in the last few weeks and they're presenting, it's probably going to be linked with that surgery. Post-op pain, complication, whatever it is, it's probably linked. So ask those questions. Focus on what's relevant to the chief complaint. So if someone's having chest pain, don't ask them about their foot. It might be linked, but at the same time, it's important to know, like, if you're having chest pain, do you have a history of heart disease? Do you have a history of um, breathing difficulties, COPD, all of those things? Next up, you have the social history and family history. Family history is kind of simple. So if someone's coming in with chest pain, you always want to ask like, hey, do you have a history of heart disease in your family? If someone's coming in with uh, underlying um, eye changes, vision changes, you can always ask about family history for that. Then social history is fascinating because there's so many parts of the social history. Uh, Do they drink alcohol, tobacco use, social situation? Where do they live? So much of our patients' lives are more than what they have medically. Where they live has a big bearing on how they how they approach healthcare. How they live has a big bearing on how they approach healthcare. Do they have someone who can help them with their medications? That's a big deal. Uh, And if you don't have that, that can be a pretty big uh, thing to get over. So those are the ways I ask about the social history. You know, basic aspects. My dog is having a good time. Uh, And then the physical exam. This is my favorite because so much of what happens in um, our patients' lives is going to be demonstrated on their body. So if they have a rash, you'll see it. If they have a murmur, you'll hear it. If they have issues breathing, you should kind of listen to their lungs, right? These are all the things that I like to document. And sometimes people have pre-made templates of their physical exam, but I manually fill in my physical exam most of the time because I just think it's important for us to document what we see. And if you're using pre-made templates, you sometimes lose that. Lastly, you have the assessment and plan. If there is one thing you learn from this, the assessment and plan is the most important part of the history and physical. The assessment and plan tells me what you think is going down, and then it tells me exactly every single problem the patient has and tells me your plan for that problem. So here's an example. 
Here's that patient I told you about earlier, the guy with the concern for heart failure exacerbation. So for him, you would break down his problem. You'd say he's coming in with shortness of breath. Here are the important diagnostics we did. We did an echo. We did a chest x-ray. We did a VBG. The VBG did not show hypercarbia. We did a troponin and it shows that it's very high. And so I'm worried about an underlying heart issue, but I'm also worried about a COPD exacerbation. Then I include what treatments did you do? Did you give them a duo nap? Did you give them a breathing treatment? Did you give them something for their heart? Then you go through the rest of their problems in the exact same way. Clearly, this patient has diabetes. You know, what was the last A1C? What diagnostics did they get? What treatment did you give? Did you give them an insulin? Then you have hyperlipidemia and hypertension. Similarly, I break down each of these problems and I tell you what I use to diagnose them and what I use to treat them. And that, I know it's overwhelming, but that, believe it or not, is the whole HNP. Once you really get used to this, you will be able to ask questions and fill this in magnificently. I have full faith. Um, but the problem is sometimes people don't know these facets of the history and physical, and so we forget to ask these things. So now that you know them, I hope you can physically walk through this, think about how you want to structure it, and know why it's so important to ask the questions that we ask patients. I hope this was helpful. If you like this video, please drop a like, comment, share, subscribe. It means the world to me, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.